All right, ladies and gentlemen, the wait is finally over. And now in today's video, we shall be taking a look at all of the new Wood Elf DLC units, characters, items. You guys get the picture, all the good stuff. So firstly, let us begin in this video here by taking a look at the Sisters of Twilight. Here they are riding their mighty uh, forest dragon, which is one of the two mount options. So the Sisters of Twilight actually cannot be put on foot. Although I think that'd be kind of cool if they like ran on foot together. It'd be kind of, I guess, a little bit tricky to animate. But nonetheless, they cannot be put on foot. You have either a Great Eagle option, which is faster and cheaper, or you have the big forest dragon here, which is the big Papa version. And it's certainly very, very cool. Now, as far as the sisters go, you have two firing options. So it's kind of like a bolt thrower. You can see here the stats are illustrated, but in the single fire mode, it's obviously better at killing single entities and things like Demogriff Knights, monstrous units. Then you also have the Talon of Dusk. So this is the spray fire mode, which does uh, poison damage and is obviously just much, much better against hordes of infantry and things like that. So that is the Talon of Dusk. On top of that, they do also have the sporadic or sepophoric breath. Bit of a tricky word there, but it's a dragon breath attack. And then they have the Eagle Quiver. Now, there's one more ability on the Sisters of Twilight, which they do not have unless they're below a certain threshold. So when they get below 20% HP, uh, essentially they have the Conjoined Destiny. So over a period of time, they're going to be getting a heal here. You can see the Conjoined Destiny preparing to heal. So it's kind of like a channeling ability where it goes for 30 seconds and then at the very end, it heals them. So if they're able to survive while they're low like that, it does heal them up. And I certainly think it's very, very good. I think that the Sisters of Twilight certainly are going to be some uh, decent players here in the uh, campaign and as well as multiplayer. So looking forward to giving them a try, giving them a good old shake. And of course, after this video, uh, there will be a video going up with uh, some battles using the Sisters and throughout the Unclean and all that sort of good stuff. So here are the Sisters of Twilight and guys, we'll see you on the next unit. All right, guys. So next up, we have Ariel. Ariel definitely going to be a very powerful character in campaign. And honestly, in multiplayer, I used her in pretty much every game I've done in multiplayer and the quick battles I played. And she is a very, very strong. Now, as far as her price point, she's very expensive. With her full kit, she costs, I think, it depends on how you cut the spells and whatnot in the bottom corner, but she can cost upwards of 2,000 gold. So it's a serious investment. But she causes terror, which is very nice. You're going to be using her in the front line. And if your opponent wants to blob up on top of her, she has some very, very good defense measures. She's got Soul Stealer, which, of course, is a meta-defining ability as far as multiplayer goes. Word of Pain, Tempest, of course, is amazing. If you're facing off against vampires or anyone who's looking to come at you from the skies, Tempest is a very, very good ability. Apotheosis, Dwellers Below, which is more situational, and Shield of Thorns. So you can see, obviously, she's got healing, she's got AoE damage, she's got AoE buffs, she has anti-air. Definitely brings a lot to the table, but where she really shines is in her bound abilities. She has the Acorn of the Ages here, so you can see she's got a free Awakening of the Wood, which, you know, can't complain about free spells. It's very good. But more importantly, she has one of the better items in the game, which I think kind of puts her up on that tier of sort of similar to Ilariel, but obviously it's not AoE, but Berry Wine is very good because it's free. So she can basically heal any target, including herself. So you can see we pop it here. It puts you back up to perfect vigor and also restores your health up to uh, 1300 there, or plus 1300. So very similar to like a regrowth. She also does have the Jard of Doom, which there's no targets nearby, but it's basically just a ma magic missile attack. It also lowers the weapon strength by 25%, which is very useful against enemy monsters. So for example, Dragon over Shagath, a giant, a lord on a zombie dragon, anyone like that, it can apply a debuff, which lasts for a short period of time. I don't think it's terribly long. It doesn't actually say in the tooltip, but in my testing, I think it was like 8 to 12 seconds or something, so it's really not bad. Now, on top of that, she's got Greater Arcane Conduit. She does have the Wraith Wrath of the Wood, which gives a missile damage buff to your entire army and armor piercing missile damage. So if you're going for like an Alpha Strike with Waywatchers with Prey of Anothrema, it can get even more crazy now with Wrath of the Wood. She's got Ancient's Protection, so when she casts, your entire army gets 10% physical resist, Life Bloom, uh, Blessing of the Ancients, of course, if you're in the forest, and she's also Unbreakable. I think that Ariel is going to be super powerful in campaign with, like, Soul Stealers and Dwellers Below and Siege Battles. And on top of that, I think she's going to be an absolute beast in multiplayer. So looking forward to uh, showing you guys her in action, showing you guys her in action relatively soon, so stay tuned for that. And now on to the next unit. Next up, we have the Glorious Glade Captain, which, of course, is an FLC unit, but I figured we'd include it in this video just for the sake of analysis. And she has some good options. She's very similar to like your guardian characters, like your master for the Dark Elves, anti-large, armor-piercing, and she has a really good mount option. The, late, the Great Stag mounts are insanely good. These bad boys do have 90 speed, uh, so they can really cover a lot of ground much faster than other characters in that similar category. And on top of that, much like the Hands of the Hands of the Everqueen, uh, they have pretty good missile attacks as well. But she kind of is much better in melee, whereas uh, the Hands of the Everqueen, of course, I believe have armor-piercing attacks with their missiles. But She's a pretty useful character. She does have the Dance of Loic, so if you're going for like a blob build, which Wood Elves can really do a blob now, using their Great Stag Knights and the Zotes, which we'll be showing you in just a second, uh, they can stack these kind of buffs with melee defense and can certainly do some work. So I'm definitely a fan of this character. I think it's quite cool. They have the Horn of Isha as well, which again is even more, so melee attack and reload speed. So just having this character near one of your blobs or your pockets of infantry, it's going to be giving plus five, plus five if you have the appropriate items. And the reload skill is okay. Honestly, it's just a bit of a caveat there, but... 
But there's the Glade Captain on her uh, stag, and now on to the units. And now, my friends, we have the Blade Singers. Blade Singers, I think, are probably one of the best units in the DLC. As far as like trading goes, they have pretty insane combat stats. 44 with magic damage, so against like Skaven or you know units like Phoenix Guard that of course have crazy physical resist, they can really cut through them quite well. But on top of that, great armor piercing values, bonus first infantry, and depending on the circumstances, you can pop their buff here, the Whirling Death. And when you pop this, it gives them extra base damage at the cost of their armor piercing. So if you're facing like, uh, you go into an AP matchup, right? But they surprise you. Suddenly you're facing off against a, a bunch of Marauders instead of Chosen and Chaos Warriors. You just switch it, and they get a massive damage buff against Light Armor, which I think is very cool. But yeah, in my testing with the Armor Piercing, these guys do very well. They trade evenly with, like, Karganeth Executioners. They can definitely kill elite units very effectively. And they're also fight quite quick with 46 speed. So even if you are fighting, like, Great Swords or, you know, Harganeth Executioners, you have 10 more speed. Your ability to outmaneuver your opponents is just shown even more here with the Wood Elves. And uh, Blade Singers are... A really, really good unit. I definitely think you guys are going to enjoy them. I and uh, Yeah, there they are. Wood Elves got some punch now in the melee game. They had Dryads, and I guess before, but the Dryads, of course, aren't a terribly hard-hitting unit. But I think Blade Singers are going to be really, really good. And uh, I've definitely had some success in some of the replays I played with them. But there are the Blade Singers. Looking forward to playing some Wood Elf melee rushes with, like, Blobs and Zotes and all sorts of crazy shit. So there you have it, guys. We'll see you on the next unit. All right, guys, and so now we're back with a couple of the new cavalry units here for the Wood Elves. And firstly, we have the Great Stag Knights. Now, these guys are really neat for sure. So they're hard hitting, 76 charge bonus, 69 weapon strength, that's what she said, and on top of that, amazing AP values to boot. Uh, but where they really shine, of course, is in their mobility. These bad boys, as far as like heavy cav goes, typically with like demis, empire knights, you know, questing knights, their speed is usually between 66 and like the mid 70s, but these guys have freaking 90 speed. And in the testing I've done, trading them against Demogriff Knights, they trade pretty much dead even with Demis with Halberds, which is insane. So they're extremely fast. Uh, they can trade very evenly with elite heavy cav units. And uh, yeah, that they're just really, really, you know, encapsulate the Wood Elves. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, if they, you know, trade evenly with Demis and they're faster than them, well, aren't they just better in every way? Well, yes, they are very good, but they're also very, very expensive. And secondly, they have relatively low armor, comparatively speaking, but they also have silver shields. But if there's like weight of dice, like Skaven Slave Slingers or basic archers kind of shooting them, they don't really endure as well against like low AP attacks. Also, a unit like Demogriff Knights, if they are surrounded by low AP spear units, will last much longer than the Great Stag Knights. The Great Stag Knights, again, have the lower armor values and uh, their melee defense is also not the best. So if they are surrounded by like spears and units like that, they can go down pretty quickly. But yeah, these guys are game changers. Uh, I think they're very good, but I think one of the better units for the Wood Elves is the ROR we'll be getting to soon, the Lost Sylvan Knights, which is the ROR for the Great Stag Knights. Now here we have the Glade Riders of Spears. And again, feels a great niche for the Wood Elves. You know, not flashy. They don't have cool glowing magic effects or anything like that. But these guys, uh, you know, again, you don't have to send Wild Riders to chase down Chaff. Now you have a cheap unit uh, that you can bring in droves. It's very affordable to bring like four of these. I think you could almost afford three of them for the cost of like one wild rider. Uh, so you can bring like three of these guys, really harass your opponent's back line and really tax their micro. And just having a shielded cheap skirmish unit is like a huge valuable tool for pretty much any faction. So there you have it guys. So those are the new cab units and now on to the big papa zotes. And here are the glorious uh, turtle dragon ogre people. These are the zotes and zotes are definitely quite cool. When they hit something, it lowers the magic resist of that target by 22% with their dampened ability. But more importantly, they also do magic damage. So they accentuate their own damage, which I think is quite cool. But what makes zotes pretty crazy is like wood elves of any faction now are going to be getting so many free spells. Like with Ariel back here, she's got three free spells. Uh, on top of that, Zotes bring free spells, and you have the Sisters of Thorn, which bring free spells. Wood Elves are just going to be going crazy with this, I feel. But they have two Earthbloods, so Zotes can obviously cast Earthblood here. They also have Flesh to Stone, so they only have 60 armor, but they can buff themselves up instant speed uh, to get 120 armor, which is insane. So in Blob Fights, for example, they can buff themselves, but one of my favorite synergies is actually using the Great Stag Knights, who only have 60 armor, and then using the Zotes to Flesh to Stone them. They go up to 120, and then they're just like the fastest, hardest hitting, heaviest armored. I feel like I'm like doing a 1980s like WWE, you know, promo or something. But yeah, they just do solid work. But Zotes are definitely really, really good. Um, a little bit, I believe they are, don't hit quite as hard as Dragon Ogres. They have to have a downside of some sorts, but they're also quite pricey as well. But um, yeah, Zotes are just really, really neat units and uh, really looking forward to mixing them in. And like, like I said, well, what else can go for crazy rushes now? You have these like fast, hard hitting infantry, these monstrous units. You can go for like rushes. Like what else are going to be very unpredictable in multiplayer now? And very, very scary in campaign as well. So there are the Zotes, guys. Enjoy. And now on to the ROR's. And now it is time to look at these glorious ROR's. We have the Race of the Frozen Heart. These are the ROR Dryads. And these guys, of course, do have a Frostbite mechanic. They do also have the magical attacks of the uh, standard Dryads. But Frostbite is really where they shine. And honestly, uh, I use these guys in a couple games, which you guys will be seeing in the next hour or so. And yeah, they're pretty crazy for sure. I mean, they were beating down Rad Ogres. Great attack stats. But really, the Frostbite is just super valuable. I don't know if they'll be like an auto pick, but... 
you know, there are situations in which having Frostbite in the front line isn't terrible, you know, pre helps prevent cycle charging and really allows you to catch your prey. So they got Frenzy, they got all that good stuff that Dryads have, and they're ready to go. Now, these are my favorite of the Widowfire Wars, the Lost Sylvan Knights. So they are ethereal. You'll notice they are ghostly. They have 75% physical resist as far as their HP, 4,500 against the 5,000. So only 500 less HP for the physical resist, I think is a really good trade-off. And on top of that, they cause terror. They have 90 speed. They hit super hard, 52, 38, 69 against uh, the standard ones. If we take a look here, 43, 30, 69. So a huge stat differential for sure in the melee attack department. But what's crazy too is they cause terror and the regular stag knights do not. So getting these guys to just bunker bust the back line and, you know, collapse a formation of spears who, you know, might, be, might, might not be immune to psychology is very, very useful. And yeah, I found great synergies using the Lost Silver Knights with Ariel. Because again, she has that, that wine heal. So you can use the uh, berry wine to heal them up. And uh, yeah, you can give them like flesh to stone with zotes even. And like give them a 60 armor. Like there's so many cool combos for sure. So these are the Lost Silver Knights ROR. Now over here we have the Enigmas of Giran. And uh, or Giran, I don't know how to say that. My apologies. These are the ROR zotes. So they have flesh to stone. Same ability as the other ones. But more importantly, guys, they have a free regrowth. So you want to get real crazy with the Wood Elves. All right. So let's bring Ariel with her uh, berry wine. Let's bring some zotes with the regrowth. Let's bring some other zotes with two free earth bloods. And just, you know, free spells for everybody, man. And the amount of healing and stacking buffs you can have with Wood Elves now. Holy shit, it is crazy. So these are the Enigmas of Gran here. So there are a couple of other units to look at. Or heroes, I should say. So uh, we first have to go and take a look at Drycha. Drycha, of course, is... One of the new lords available to the Wood Elves here. So we'll be taking a look at her in the menu in uh, just a moment. All right, guys. And now it's time for your girl Drycha here. And she's certainly quite good. So Drycha, of course, is a shadow caster. So has all the bells and whistles of a shadow caster with the complete kit of spells. But her unique abilities are the Roused to Rat. So she has the ability to summon Dryads. So we'll go ahead and do that here. And it's not one charge. It's actually two charges. And you can see they're called Malevolent Dryads. So these are... A little bit different than your basic Dryads, and let's go ahead and see why. So you can see here they got the 41, they got Frenzy, they do also have Unbinding since they're magical, they cause fear, and generally speaking, I think they just have better stats, um, a little bit better stats. So those are the Malevolent Dryads, let's go ahead and move them away so they can go uh, do other things, but I think she's going to be a great cheap Lord as far as her like gold cost and multiplayer, it's just dirt cheap, it costs almost nothing, and uh, yeah, she's a really, really neat character, so she, she's, she's doing a dance for us, she's getting down, throwing some moves, yeah, of course, very pissed off. Now, she's got the Fang of Talroth. This adds 15 seconds to ability recharges rate when she's casting, so that's quite cool. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, what is the one that the Greenskins used to have? Not the Greenskins, the High Elves. They had the, oh no, the Lich Staff for DJ Kotep. That's what it was. She's got Smoke and Mirrors. She also has the Blessing of the Ancients here, and she has the Fanatic Resolve. So, you can see here, as she's fighting, the longer she's fighting, apparently. So, hit points, okay. Hit points disabled if greater than, okay. So, the longer she fights, and I guess, is it length? No. Hit points greater than 75%, hit points less than 50%. Okay, so it's conditional based on HP. So tier 1, she gets 5 uh, to herself and nearby allies. Here she gets plus 10. Man, and when she's um, below 25%, she gives plus 15 melee attack and plus 15% base damage. That's actually really strong. Kind of cool for sure. So we've got Drysha here, and uh, that's really her unique kit of spells. She's got the Fanatical Resolve. She's got the uh, Lore of Shadows here, and she also does have the Roused to Wrath to summon some Dryads. Now, this isn't all the Wood Elves have gotten. Uh, it's almost everything, but the last bit we will actually be showing you in the menu, which is just a, a basic kit of like core casters and things like that and caster lords, much like the High Elves got in the most recent DLC. So there you have it, guys. There's Drycha. Very excited to use her in multiplayer. I think she's going to be a cheap, cost-effective option for rush builds. And we'll see you guys on the main menu. All right, guys. And so now we're back on the menu here. You can see we do have uh, all the kind of kit of spell singers. So we have one of shadows. We have one of beasts. We have one of high magic. And they can all ride either unicorn, horse, or eagle. So... Again, the Wood Elves now have a, a, a vast selection of Lords at their disposal, which I think is quite neat. As far as items go, they have the Channeling Staff and the Opal Amulet. So there you guys have it. Again, we have Dark, Life, High Magic, Beasts, and Shadows. So I think one of the only ones they're missing is Metal, but uh, you know, it makes sense. Wood Elves, they're about the wood. They're not about the metal. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, we will be having a Skaven version coming up relatively soon, going through all the Skaven units. This, of course, will be the first one going up. So stay tuned for that, as well as Quick Battles, which over the course of the next week, we're going to be saturating very heavily into Quick Battles. And, of course, uh, in a couple days, uh, we will be having the next Ever Chosen Invitational, which is going to be quite exciting on the 28th and 29th. So thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Take care.